last video for the entire quarter. Are you excited? As excited as I am? Hopefully. Plus, we're talking about nuclear fission and fusion. Lots of fun to talk about. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the TED video um, with a remarkable, remarkable young man and what he was able to accomplish at such a young age. Um, crazy to think about. Um, but basically, nuclear fission and fusion, these are the types of reactions that happen in a nuclear reactor. And what you'll notice, um, you'll see it many times on this page, is in each of our fission and fusion reactions, they produce energy, okay? which is the whole idea of nuclear reactors is to get energy. Now, I'm not here to pass any judgment on nuclear reactors, good, bad. Basically, I just want to discuss or kind of look at what and how these reactions work. Okay? So we'll start off with fission. And fission is where we take a large nuclei, usually it's an isotope of uranium, and we split that into smaller uh, nuclei. And the way that we split it is we fly a small particle, in this case a neutron, at this radioactive isotope. Okay. Now when we split an atom, we get a lot of energy out of that. And that's what we're after with nuclear reactions. Um, now, what, how this works okay, is we have a neutron. Okay, so we have a, a small particle. We'll just say that. And we are going to fly that. We are going to get that particle moving very, 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 very quickly. Okay. And we're going to fly that into a really large nucleus. And that nucleus is going to split apart into two smaller ones. In this case, we have krypton-91 and barium-142. It's also going to produce three more small particles. Okay, So this is just a coefficient out in front of our symbol for the neutron. So when we fly one neutron into an atom of uranium, we get two new nuclei, these are our daughter nuclei, and we get three more neutrons. Now, this is all happening in a reactor, so these neutrons are now able to fly into another large nuclei, Right? So no large nuclei, large nuclei, large nuclei. Then when these collide, again we're going to form two smaller nuclei. nuclei. We're going to produce three more neutrons. Each one of these is going to produce three more neutrons. So we have those are two particles, those are two particles. Right, so now from one original neutron in one reaction we produced three new neutrons. In the second reaction we now have nine new neutrons. These go and collide with three more large nuclei each and they're going to produce three more neutrons. Right, so we have tons of reactions happening off of this. Now remember, each one of these reactions, we're producing energy with each one of these collisions. So with starting with one neutron, as you can see, as long as we have a, a nuclei, a large nuclei present, we can quickly increase the amount of uh, collisions that are happening and increase the amount of energy that is being given off. Now, one of the problems with nuclear uh, reactors is you have this term called meltdown, right? So we have nuclear meltdown. That's why most people do not like nuclear energy. They don't like this concept of nuclear meltdown and, and what it means. And basically, in, in very simplistic terms, what happens in this nuclear meltdown is this reaction, okay, this cascade effect,
gets out of control. So that's what happens with our nuclear meltdown. So what happens, what we have to do in order to kind of um, maintain or control this reaction is there, there will be some sort of material in the reactor, um, usually some sort of rod um, of, of a material, and that material is going to absorb some of these neutrons that are produced. So it, rather than the neutrons going to collide with a, a large nuclei, they'll be absorbed into this rod, and therefore you can then control how many of these neutrons then are colliding in order to produce energy. Um, so basically this nuclear meltdown occurs when you can no longer control the number of neutrons that are, are being produced and basically can keep those numbers of neutrons under control. All right. Now fission, or excuse me, fusion, is kind of the opposite effect. And the opposite in that we're going to take two small nuclei to form a larger one. And we're not going to be dealing with really large uh, elements. We're dealing usually with uh, elements or isotopes of hydrogen. Okay, so we have fusion uh, deals with hydrogen. So we have two different isotopes of hydrogen here. Um, just as a kind of bonus vocabulary, um, this is deuterium okay, and this is tritium. Um, because hydrogen isotopes are very useful to us, they get their own special names. Um, maybe, I don't know, that'll come up on Jeopardy sometime. You can answer that. Otherwise, you know, put it out of your mind, just a little random fact. So if we combine two uh, nuclei of hydrogen, we're going to form, in this case, a helium. Okay, and we're also going to produce a neutron. Okay. And then, of course, the whole purpose of what we're doing is it's going to give off a lot of energy for us. All right, so this information is interesting. It's fun to talk about. Um, this I, I like nuclear chemistry. It's very interesting. There's a lot of applications to it. Um, but what am I going to be testing on? Um, well, what I'm going to be testing on is similar to what you went through on the first page of notes of determining your missing symbol. Um, and that's like these uh, examples shown here. So same rules apply as from our first page of notes where we're going to have to conserve our energy. We're going to have to conserve our um, mass. Okay, So all of our uh, mass numbers need to be conserved. Or excuse me, these are atomic numbers. So our atomic numbers need to be conserved and our mass numbers need to be conserved. Okay. These are just a little bit more complicated than the first examples that we worked through because we have many more symbols that we're dealing with. Okay. So this first example here, this is a fission example. And we know that because we're dealing with a very, very massive element here. Again, fission is usually worked with uh, uranium isotopes. So we have to figure out our top number and our bottom number. So we have our mass number, so our A. To determine that, basically we want to conserve them. So we have 1 plus 235. And that's going to equal, we have 94 from our strontium. And then we have our missing symbol here. Okay, so I'm just going to label that A, our mass number. And then we have our neutron here, which has a mass number of 1. But remember, this is our coefficient. So we have 3 of our excuse me, neutrons. So we have a total mass number of 3 for that equation. So we have 236 is equal to 97 plus A. So we subtract 97, and we get 139, I believe. So that's our A, that is our mass number for our symbol. So we have 139. My apologies if you can't really see this. I'm trying to write big and bold. 
We'll keep this color coded to try and help with the visual of this. So now we need to determine our atomic number, right? Our lower number. So we have 0 plus 92, and that equals 38 plus our atomic number plus 3 times 0, which is just 0. So we have 92 uh, minus 38, and we get 54 is equal to our atomic number. So that goes down below. And then we look to our periodic table for the atomic number of 54. Uh, 53, 54, that's xenon. So we have xenon 139 is our missing symbol there. All right, next example. Let's look at the same concept here. We have our uh, mass number. We have 2 plus our mass number of our missing symbol. And that's going to equal 3 plus our neutron. So we have 2 plus A is equal to 4. So A is equal to 2. And then we want to do our atomic number. So we have 1 plus Z is equal to 2 plus 0. So Z is equal to 1, which is hydrogen. So QMP there for you to work through. Definitely practice these, um, especially your uh, fission examples. Those are usually the more challenging symbols to come up with. Um, but definitely all you just need is practice um, and working through the algebra.